Yeah, so good evening everyone. Hope everyone is fit and fine. A uh, very short introduction about myself. My name is Megha Mala and I am here working with Aritik in marketing team. I am the moderator and host of this webinar. I have Ms. Apanaranjan, my colleague from marketing team with me. She will be my co-host in this webinar. We have also Mr. Ankit Pranjapanas with us. Ankit is the principal founder of EasySendy and Arity, which is a full-stack integrated sales and marketing automation platform for the B2B small and medium enterprise brands. Hi, uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Looking forward for this uh, webinar. I hope uh, we'll grab a lot of information from here, and we can uh, discuss a lot about digital analytics. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. Yep. Now, hey, everyone. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, coming up on time, and we could see. We have really good crowd joining in today for uh, today's discussion on uh, digital analytics and the uh, and the latest innovations in digital analytics and uh, in detail we will be discussing it today out here with our experts uh, uh, experts joining the call. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone out here. Now, I would like to uh, welcome again to everyone to our third live webinar of Analytic Live. And today's topic will be digital analytics impact on your business and marketing. Now, I would like to give a short introduction about Aritic, the company. The Aritic is a unified marketing automation platform for the B2B business team. Our parent company is Data AG Software Private Limited, a Bangalore-based company started operating in 2015 with two major SaaS product platform, EasySendy and RIT. Now, EasySendy is focused on SME and SMB business. Aritic is focused on customers from mid enterprise and enterprise. Both Aritic and EasySendy product platforms are used by 2K plus companies across globe. From January 2022, we started getting deep into India and Asia market. Okay, so now coming to webinar session which for, for which we are here. So Aritic Live is a platform that that brings professional close to the Aritic platform. So this is an online talk show organized for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders and working professionals. So this uh, talk show include webinar, webcast, podcast and live event from Aritic and partner network. Over to you Megmala. Thank you Apanna for giving me the introduction about uh, Aritic Live. Now when we talk about uh, Analytic, uh, digital analytics, we know that with almost 65% of the world's population having internet access, businesses which cannot afford to overlook the enormous potential of establishing on, on online presence. However, having a web presence and using digital marketing is insufficient. In addition, businesses want robust analytics for all of the marketers' digital marketing initiatives. Digital analytics can help you make sense of all the data your customers generate about your brand. When most marketers hear digital analytics, they think of web-based metrics like traffic, bounce rate, and unique visitors, often connected with well-known analytics like Google Analytics. Last year, worldwide digital ad expenditure was estimated to reach for 155 billion dollar with 191 billion dollar in the US alone. Despite their enormous spending, many marketers still struggle to answer the age-old question. Is my digital campaign working? Now, so we have come with the topic of digital analytics impact on business and marketing. Now, we are going to introduce our esteemed speaker. Our first speaker is Mr. Rishab Chakraborty, Manager of Product Marketing and Organic Growth. He has about 7 years experience across MNC, digital agency and startups. 
His career started as a business analyst and was focused on B2B before getting into B2C side. His current industry focus is fintech and crypto and his core skills include organic growth and performance marketing. Hobby wise, he loves reading about the auto industry and EV technology. We are delighted to have you as a speaker, Mr. Risha. I would like to request you if you add something apart from this. Over to you, Mr. Risha. You are not audible. Your your mic is on mute. Yeah, hi. thank you uh, for that. Yeah. So hi everybody. Uh, I'm Rishabh and uh, glad to join this uh, entire discussion today. Right. Uh, currently, I'm associated with Coin DCX and I handle the entire organic growth piece over here. Uh, previously, like Mega Mala said, that I have had a primary a B2B kind of an experience uh, before fintech and crypto, and that was to get a great sense of understanding for marketing uh, tech stack. Uh, the overall uh, data pipeline strategies uh, that can build a better uh, marketer within. Uh, glad to have this uh, discussion rolling now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rishab. Uh, so our next speaker for today is Shrikant Vadrevu, Manager, Marketing Operations, Clarivet. So a decade of experience at the intersection of technology, business and marketing by virtue of various roles in corporate including large and mid-sized and an agency digital marketing startup that helped early stage SaaS companies possess a 360 degree exposure to services product marketing. He wants to leverage marketing as a key driver for an organization's growth and engagement by connecting the R and I of marketing ROI. He believes in the mantra of learning and sharing, so enjoy time coaching and mentoring aspirants who want to venture into the world of marketing. So welcome Shrikant, we are very happy that you are here and you'll be sharing your experience and if anything I have missed out and you want to speak about, so definitely uh, please go ahead. Thank you Abanna, thanks for the kind introduction. Hi Ankit, hi everyone. Uh, hi. Thank you for call. Uh, excited to be part of this call and learning and sharing about the Look forward to this. Thank you. Thank you, Shrikant. Thank you, Srikant, for the introduction. And now, my next speaker is Mr. Shonesh Prokash, CEO of CMO Outsourced. Shonesh works with B2B SaaS startups and SMEs as a virtual CMO with a special focus on content marketing for generating top of the funnel leads. He has more than 15 years of experience across sales and marketing for B2B companies. We are honored to have Shonesh as one of our esteemed speakers. I would like to request Shonesh to add a few if you want to add something else. Yeah, so thanks for the introduction, Megan Miller. It pretty much covers, covers uh, this thing. I mean, I, uh, I've, uh, in, you know, before branching out on my own, I've worked in uh, you know, a lot of uh, companies, uh, in the likes of ICICI Bank, Times of India, Adeco, start different verticals in the B2B sales space. And I also understand, uh, you know, and experience in the space of digital marketing. So I kind of, uh, you know, focus on B2B because I've been in B2B sales and uh, B2B marketing uh, is basically, a, you know, kind of a sales support, uh, you know, function uh, for, uh, you know, B2B enterprises. And that's why since I, uh, the flavor I bring to my clients is because I've been in the sales, sales sort of sales system, I, I empathize well with them. So, which is a very important, uh, you know, aspect in B2B marketing because the marketing team need to emphasize the sales team. That is an area which I, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I have experience in and it kind of adds value to my, uh, in, in, and I look forward to sharing my thoughts on this subject from a B2B uh, marketing standpoint. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sunesh. We are really looking forward to it. And so last speaker for today is Shubhajit and, uh, Kumar. He is co-founder and CMO of Sapiens Automata. He has about 14 plus years of experience across MNC consulting firm and startups. Post MBA, he started his career in a consulting firm and was focused on B2B. He has also worked extensively on sales, business development, market research and consulting. He is currently working on his own venture which is focused on developing cutting edge software for, for the automobile industry using AI that is artificial intelligence and advanced ML that is machine learning algorithms. 
He has an active interest on financial market and has laser eye focus to increase profitability and in ROI. So uh, welcome Shubhajit and we are delighted to have you today for our webinar and we are definitely looking forward to uh, speak uh, and to know more about the digital analytics from your perspective. And if anything I missed out so, and you want to, uh, def if you want to uh, share that. Uh, Avanna, thank you for the introductions. That's all you have already covered all of the things. I would like to add, uh, uh, I have done sales and what uh, Sonesh has mentioned. So much of the B2B marketing, there need to be a strong coordination about the sales aspects and how to improve the uh, profitabilities overall. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Shubhajit. Okay, so uh, before we start the discussion, I would request all of our audience to put your question in chat board uh, so that we can discuss all our questions in our Q&A round. Thank you. Thank you, Aparna. Uh, I would like to inform our audience also that we have opened our next webinar registration. It is The topic is Next Evolution of Your Marketing Automation Customer Data Platform. I am providing the link here on the chat box. Now, we will start our discussion. My first question is for Mr. Rishabh, uh, actually it is for all panel members basically. So my first question is like uh, what is digital analytics and why does it matter to one's business? I would like to request Subhajit to share your view on this. Yes. Yes. So, uh, uh, digital analytics, like uh, uh, as you said, like uh, when um, when we are uh, understanding a business, there need to be certain uh, analytics that we are providing in terms of identifying whether we are getting qualified leads or not. What is the traffic source that are happening for this? So, how the page views, how much time that is spent, the conversion. So, all these parts of art for the digital marketing analytics itself. This eventually help us to understand your customer, how they are, uh, uh, what they are trying to view it, what is your contents and, and, and whether are you addressing your customer's immediate needs and requirements, whether the message and the communications that you wanted to flow, whether that makes sense and whether your customers are getting a view or graphs over it. So these are some of the parameters and tools that are being used and that gives a views about the digital analytics space. So this is a very top of the view answer that I have given. Okay, thank you, thank you for the view, uh, Shubhajit. I would like to request Mr. Rishabh to uh, tell us your point of view. What is digital analytics and why does it matter to one business? Right. Uh, so I think uh, mm -hmm. when we talk about digital analytics or any any function within the company, right, all of them usually lead to a certain business outcome or requirement. Right? Uh, now when you look at a business, the usual two uh, metrics within a business are either expense led or their revenue. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking about let's say digital businesses, right, uh, and this is agnostic of B2B or B2C, uh, on the cost side there are very critical metrics that we need to probably keep in mind, right? So, with the cost being the denominator. One of them simply could be, let's say, uh, cost of acquisition, right? Uh, which is a very key metric. And then cost of acquisition by different channel, right? So you can add layers of complexity on that. Uh, so yeah. digital analytics can be understand as key metrics that measure the performance of uh, your activities. But then necessarily your activities need to be tied to the overall business objective. So when you're looking at your own performance, if you're able to, uh, in the denominator, put either a cost framework or if you're able to take a revenue in the numerator and split it by the work that you do, that will kind of uh, showcase exactly the value that your function, your team, or your individual contribution is taking. So extending on the same concept, right? Let's say when I'm looking at the overall, uh, the revenue side of the businesses, right? Over there, I can have a very simple metric such as return on ad spends, right? ROS uh, as a very key metric. Uh, so now how do these metrics work, right? Do these work independently or do they work together? is again a very important call that the digital teams have to take care of. I'll give you a great example. So at our end, while we keep a very strong cap on 
CAC, right, which is a cost per acquisition, uh, we also do identify ROAS, right, the return on ad sense. So today, let's say at the same CAC, if I'm getting very high quality users, these users are going to spend more money with me, which means my return on ad spend is kind of going up, right, which means now I have a chance to experiment a new channel within my channel mix, and I'm okay with letting the CAC go a little bit up, right? So if I was getting, let's say, 100 rupees CAC, but my ROS was, let's say, uh, 2x, and then uh, eventually it optimizes to 4x uh, ROS, then I know that I'm okay with the CAC being 150 or 200. This is very important because uh, <clears throat> while you're looking at digital uh, analytics alone, you will want to optimize everything. You'll want to take ROS up and you'll want to reduce CAC which may not give you a great business, right? Because you might end up taking a very fraudulent source data uh, and you might uh, eventually lead the company or the numbers to eventually sink from both sides. Uh, so in very short, just uh, to summarize this, uh, digital analytics are nothing but group of metrics, right? They have uh, CAC, ROS, it could be LTV, lifetime value of customers, it could be average order value, it could be uh, total time spent, right? If we go out of app products to web products, it can be average time uh, spent on the website, it can be bounce rate, uh, it can be uh, you know pages per session uh, and it could be as vanilla as something like total users, uh, total sessions. Right? Uh, but all of them need to come together to make a business outcome and I think uh, that is uh, my input uh, to the forum. Thank you Rishan. Uh, now I would like to request Mr. Srikant to share his view. Sure, thanks Mega. Uh, I think Subhajit and Rishub have uh, captured it pretty well, uh, but just to go a level below that, uh, from a basic level point, uh, you have a brand, you have a company, you may have a website or you may have an application, right, mobile application or both website and mobile application. So basically, uh, this analytics plays a role in terms of what are your potential users or visitors doing, right? When they visit your website, when they visit your application, what are they doing? Which uh, part of a uh, website are they visiting more? How many pages? What is the time spent? Uh, then as we should uh, mention in terms of various channels, so what are the various acquisition channels from which uh, visitors or users are coming? Uh, what is the behavior like? Uh, uh, which pages are they spending more time? Where are they bouncing? Where are they exiting from? All right. So, this analytics typically spans around at a very high level, mm -hmm. uh, which gives you these insights for you to make those business decisions, right? For example, uh, we can talk about so many examples, I think Kushub has covered one of them very well. Say for example, a lot of people are coming to a pricing page, you see a lot of visitors coming to pricing page but you're not having enough conversions. So that's an insight for your team to make, saying that okay, we have so many, we have 100 people coming every day but there are not much conversions going on probably there is something which we need to optimize uh, and we can talk about uh, conversion rate optimization, landing rate optimization, so on and so forth. But at a high level, I think typical user of this type behavior across your different own assets, whether it's a website, whether it's a mobile application, uh, and then, yeah, understanding uh, the keen eye in terms of how the behavior is, what they're doing, what is working, what is not working. I think, yeah, digital analytics plays a huge role to give those insights and uh, help company scale and grow uh, uh, at the level that they want. Thank you, Srikant. Thank you, Srikant, for your love, um, nice insightful explanation. I would like to uh, take up the next question as well. So, what is digital analytics different from data analytics? I would like to request Rishav to explain give the view on this, if you can, Mr. Rishabh, over to you. So I think uh, uh, we can consider, so in some, uh, I think, retrospective view, there is a difference and at times we can also assume there is not a difference. But I think data analytics is a very dedicated function, right? uh, whereas digital analytics is a subset of marketing and it's very much focused on uh, either driving the business goals or even the vanilla metrics, right? How even Srikanth mentioned that it's a very top uh, level, right? It, it, it measures your number of events, your user behavior, the clicks, the sessions. It also measures the number of pages you have viewed, the amount of time somebody has spent on a certain uh, page, the amount of uh, product category interest that somebody has shown if it's an e-commerce platform, if there are cart abandonment, stuff like that. 
but then but data analytics has multiple layers right data analytics has uh, a data science team right? they also have a business intelligence team right? they also have uh, a, a, a dedicated engineering and data pipeline teams right <clears throat> their job is to unearth uh, inferences right so when we look at all of these metrics together uh, their job is to figure out correlations between different metrics and build statistical models right which help you uh, make a great use case i'll give you a quick example let's say we suddenly realize that there are a lot of cart abandonment right that people are adding things to the cart but they are moving out very soon a typical digital metric will tell you ki theek hai remarketing kar lete hain right let's just do remarketing yeah but a data analytics team uh, will have data from marketing and product side as well and maybe the ina rails over there are broken there is a huge chance that maybe the payment gateways are not working right so that is where the data analytics teams comes and says that maybe the proportion of abandonment has gone up because the proportion of payment failures have gone up right now this is two different problems that a performance team won't handle nor a reactivation team will handle now this is a customer support problem and this is also a brand reputation problem now right uh, mm -hmm. and this is where uh, even gratification for example people who abandon the cart uh, once the payment issue issues are solved we need to double gratify them right? in terms of maybe a 1 plus 1 or discounted uh, onboarding right uh, so that is the value of data analytics it's a much uh, mature uh, function within organizations and a uh, usual teams will include people from business intelligence who are unearthing some data points people from data sciences and business analysts who are talking to stakeholders like the marketing people the product people the engineering people the support people etc like that so data analytics is more central digital is more uh, function that's it. okay so what i can understand is uh, digital is more, digital analytics is more functional so obviously i will keep that in mind as a digital thing professional now i will write i will request mr strikant to uh take and give his view on this topic how is digital analytics different from data analytics so i, I think uh, as ishan uh, rightly uh, explained it uh, i'll probably give it in a, a more example way just adding upon what ishan has mentioned uh, say uh, you are saying that probably 30% of our web traffic Uh, is coming from say email campaigns all right and over the past few years you have been running email campaigns say you have a data of 3 years of email campaigns uh and then you want probably ask your data team to unearth insights from it right say we say what is the best time uh which day which point of time did we have highest open rates right uh you know in terms of we are getting so and so much traffic from a particular channel mm -hmm. but for you to dig down at a deeper level to understand okay what is working in it right if you take email marketing example you have a three four year old data so you want to know what time what day what subject line probably prompted uh, to have higher open rates right uh so basically depending upon your business goal you should have clarity in terms of what you want to achieve once you have the data first part is in terms of capturing the right data points mm -hmm. uh, uh and then tagging it connecting those dots with the overall business goals to understand in terms of what do you want to unearth out of it right there's a lot of data uh, it's for you uh and the team to connect it with the business goals and understand what points you want to take uh this analytics is slightly different you probably uh, analyze in terms of the overall journey flow over in terms of the channel flow over in terms of behavioral uh, per se but once you understand the behavior once you have collected all those data points for you to then take a decision probably should i choose email over digital ads should i choose events over probably email so once you have those data points and for you to make that decision i think this data analytics plays a lot of key role uh, for you to take the direction in terms of what approach should you take for which kind of segment which kind of audience for b2b it might be different b2c it might be different so for you to give that direction uh i think data analytics uh, uh, helps you uh it's okay thank you srikant for the explanation and the view now i would like to request mr shubhaji to point out his view from for this question how is the digital analytics different from data analytics uh, hi Uh, I think uh, Rishab and uh, Srikanth has wonderfully explained uh, all the points. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, so uh, 
Yes, uh, so uh, from the digital an analytics, you get all the insights which are uh, primarily helps in addressing the business needs and requirements. Like in order to attract new customers or your clients itself for it, for which you are doing it. The addressing a particular problem and how to increase, uh, like uh, uh, if I take the case of, uh, uh, like Reserve has mentioned that, after adding it, there is a payment failure and there are cards are generated. Now, if we want to dig deeper into that problem itself, and we wanted to understand, like, apart from the payment, is it like if I add certain type of products in the cart and then a payment failure is done? So I will be able to, uh, buy, or uh, the cart abundant is uh, happening. So putting those similar kinds of products in the cart and is eventually leading that the persons are abandoning the car. So how we can cluster those uh, details? So having those kinds of insights are primarily coming from a data analytics point of view. However, in terms of reaching out to your audience based on how to reach out and what is the methods that I will be able to grow my business in terms of reaching out and making my communications clear, that will give them more of to the digital analytics approach. Thank you, Shojit, and thank you, Shojit, for the explanation. Over to you, Aparna. Okay, uh, so now I would like to ask another question related to the same topic that we are dealing right now. So, what are all those primary areas in digital analytics uh, that is related to digital marketing? Uh, Shikant, if you can uh, help me with this question. So, yeah, happy to. So, there may be various functions. Uh, we can talk about, uh, say, website. We can talk about uh, up mobile apps, you can talk about various uh, different functions that you have within a company there uh, and then you can probably dig those uh, various behaviors that you want to pull right in terms of how the users are coming in, how they are going out, uh, what is the behavior looking like. So I, I think at a high level I think we could probably uh, speak about this. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, Shrikant. Uh, Rishabh, if you want to add something to this. Well, I think it's adequately covered. Uh, I think adding to this would just cause more noise. <laughs> okay. okay, so one question I have, uh, can you uh, help us with some of the digital analytics tool that is very useful for digital marketing? Right, uh, so I think it's a, again, a, a little broad question, right? Because when you're talking yeah. about digital analytics, uh, we have to first identify the kind of business that I am in, right? Okay. Uh, and the kind of platform that I am in. Uh, so let's say I have recently worked, I'm recently currently working very closely with app first products, right? Okay. Uh, so when I'm looking with app first products, uh, the first thing that we would definitely need as a tool, right? Uh, right. What tool, uh, maybe better than that would be to recommend what kind of a tool. So the very first tool when you are doing a lot of high volume acquisitions is to have uh, something called an MMT partner, right? Uh, which is a mobile measurement uh, partner, right? Uh, there are many tools like that, uh, like apps flyer, adjust, etc. Okay. right? What helps uh, do with those tools is that you're able to create deep links and send it to your acquisition channels, right? And rightly attribute the conversions and also measure fraudulence of MR, right? Uh, this is one layer. Uh, the second layer is that you should always have a central database or a reporting tool. Now these could be either your Tableau uh, or it from Oracle or it could be a Cognos BI. Uh, it could also be uh, something like a BI superset. Uh, right? These kind of tools are very important uh, because they store your data centrally uh, from whatever is, is being gathered from marketing channels and within the app. Right? Uh, the second kind of tools or the third kind of tools that you would need is something uh, which helps you with product analytics. Right? Uh, ideally, these tools can be purchased or even built internally because these are not going to be shown very often to the senior management. Right? Uh, so spending a lot on these may not make sense but product analytics tools are very important because uh, essentially they will measure your uh, you know, cross funnel and flow, uh, your funnel movements, right? Sign up to, uh, oh, sorry, log in to sign up, uh, then sign up to BAB, uh, bank verification to KYC, right? Okay. Uh, KYC to first order place and stuff like that. Correct. Uh, a lot of tools that are working out there today uh, for the app first products are tools like uh, Mixed Panel uh, is one example. Uh, you also have something called uh, Amplitude, right? Which is probably the leader in this yes. category in app analytics. Uh, and once you have done this, uh, you definitely need uh, a very simple reporting tool, which again can be tied back to the Tableau or the central tool that you already have, because they are able to build basic tools. Uh, 
but as marketers, one simple tool that I think we all should really get our hands on is uh, without doubt uh, Microsoft Excel, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, a very undervalued and understated tool, but we know that people do run into problems with that. Uh, on uh, web first things, uh, web first platforms, very critical to have an attribution project tool as well. Now Google has its own attribution projects tool as well, right? Okay. Uh, why is it that important? Because let's say uh, when you're marketing something, there is 50% chance or 60% chance that koi seedha seedha click karke aa jayega. But a lot of people will be curious about the brand. They'll go to the social media, they'll go to the web, they'll go to PR and read about the brand. Uh, so you are not able to attribute exactly key why this success is coming, right? Uh, so yes. attribution projects, uh, which are on Google and also Apps Flyer has PBA, which is people-based attribution. These tools are important uh, because they will also have something called the conversion paths. Right? Okay. okay. If somebody saw your uh, ad, then they went to social media, then they went to web, then they came directly and purchased. Knowing these conversion paths are very important because even Srikant said something very interesting, right? Uh, that you have to measure uh, why the users are coming on your platform and what are their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Conversion paths help. So I think overall uh, have something, app analytics, have a uh, MMP partner, uh, have a product analytics tool uh, and definitely have a reporting tool. Right? Uh, so out of these there are many many brands out there, many many companies and software that are already working there. I have mentioned a few names. Uh, like apps fire amplitude mix panel uh, but if we just use google search and do versus versus we'll see even further a larger list of uh, tools you look at okay okay thank you so much uh, rishab i think it was uh, really nice to know that so many tools are there around the market that uh, we as a digital marketing should definitely know and we should definitely have hands on experience on those tools no absolutely and one thing and one uh, you know uh, Disclaimer to everybody is not to romanticize with tools too often uh, because mm -hmm. what happens is we all switch companies etc and every new company will have its own tech stack. True, right? yes. Uh, the one thing that we'll have to fall in love with is uh, user, user related metrics uh, and an Excel sheet. Once we are okay with these, I think we are good with it. Correct. Thank you, thank you so much Rishab. Over to you Meghmala. Okay, so my next question again to Mr. Rishav only. Uh, what are the digital analytics metrics which the company's business team should focus on? Right, I think uh, uh, that's a very top level question and I think also beyond my pay grade <laughs> to be honest. Uh, okay. But some of the things uh, I can answer it in a way which uh, where I want to show the data to my uh, senior management. Right? So I think the senior management should definitely uh, look at two big metrics, right? One is uh, the overall revenue that is generated, uh, right? And obviously cost part is there, right? I'm sure the finance team are looking at that, but overall revenue that's coming out uh, and the revenue per user that we are getting, right? Mm -hmm. so these can be uh, broken down into two big metrics that I really, really uh, like to look at. Uh, one is uh, our revenue month on month and LTV by CAC, right? Uh, LTV by CAC is lifetime value by cost of acquisition. Okay. Right? Lifetime value is important because lifetime value of a customer uh, in an industry where there is a repeat purchase behavior implies that regular dhanda aata mm -hmm. You need to ensure that if you are an Amazon customer, how many times are you going to do on my platform ever? It's very important for me. Uh, and having an analysis of that allows me to know, okay, uh, that somebody like a Rishabh or somebody like a Meghamala will probably spend X amount of time over two years engagement with you, right? Or a one year engagement with you versus uh, the cost of acquiring them for the first time, right? A uh, big metric to look at. Uh, the second is obviously overall uh, revenue metrics that are going up is something that, uh, what, and I think that is what really excites uh, the, uh, the senior management, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, some of the things that we should always give to them, and specifically if we have multiple product lines, uh, is, uh, you know, average uh, uh, order value, right, uh, per product line. Mm -hmm. and basically the uh, share of uh, top categories. For example, which categories are my hero product? Uh, okay. so if, we, if we look at a simple BCG matrix, right, uh, uh, within a business, there are some products that are your star products and there are some products that are your cash cows, right? Uh, senior management need to know which are my hero products, which are my cash cows that I can keep milking, right? Uh, and which are my uh, star products. Uh, so because that data is something that only analytics team can give because we have both cost uh, and the revenue share. So my revenue share per category uh, and my uh, overall uh, the revenue growth 
for these product spends uh, these products is going to be an important metric also to share these are not strictly digital metrics if you really look at it right uh, because sharing these metrics requires a very strong collaboration with the finance team to share these data right uh, which is something that i have at least had the uh, pleasure of exploring internally internally our marketing teams have handshake with uh, finance teams uh, and we report it on the product lines and revenues and lifetime value of customers three big metrics in the back Okay, thank you, Rishav. I do believe that uh, one of the main metrics will be the spend for any kind of campaign we are doing for the analytics purpose. So, my I will request Aparna to yeah. Okay, so uh, next question I would like to ask Shrikant. So, uh, how do digital marketers need to prepare themselves for the cookie-less future of digital analytics uh, tracking? Sure, I think that's a great question and uh, very much pertinent and relevant for the current times. Yeah. Uh, so, to, to set the base for this, so only third-party cookies uh, are being sunsetted. Uh, first party cookies which is within your website they are still active uh, right so only third party cookies uh, so to give a use case in terms of how third party cookies help uh, marketers is mostly in terms of digital advertising so you could probably collaborate with ad tech platforms or publishers and then understand who are the different set of users who is interested in particular set of topic right so you got a chance of uh, to retarget them, you got a chance to identify who can be a potential audience. May not know them, like we call it as lookalike audience. They may be your potential, potential kind of uh, prospects or customers. Then you also got a chance to target them uh, through third-party cookies. So the third-party cookies, uh, uh, so predominantly started in 2018-19. Per se, I think from past two years, different browsers, say Safari uh, has. I think in 2020 they have stopped uh, with the third-party cookies. And now it's coming to the peak because now Chrome is also with privacy needs of various customers, right? With privacy first approach, with privacy as a center point or a focal point, uh, I think Chrome, Google also has decided that Chrome we are not going to uh, carry forward or use third party cookies. So I think key points for us to navigate around this would be to understand like again, what is the source of your traffic, right? So you got help from different platforms or different publishers saying that, okay, these are the set of people who are visit our website and then you got a chance to target them. Now you can go ahead and just check, use Google Analytics or any uh, free tool, uh, say, SCM by Shubha says, basic SEO things for you to know from which channels has the traffic coming, right? And then probably once you know what are the channels, uh, what are the domains or what are the websites is helping you bring visitors, you could of course use that uh, as a metric there. Then uh, you could also use competition data, so you know your brand is say you have brand B and C as your competitors, right? Just put up their domain's name and search what kind of traffic uh, or domains they are getting from. Mm -hmm. Then you could also probably include those domains or those publishers in your digital advertising approach uh, to probably uh, ensure your reach or your consideration at the top of the funnel efforts, they are being met. Uh, these two, I would say, at a high level, where in digital marketing team members can take. Uh, there are many other tools, such as we have SignalWeb and other tools, which uh, give you a lot of data. Uh, as Vishu mentioned, there are so many tools there. Uh, it's just for you to understand the basic filters, uh, and then what all you were benefited by using third party there, uh, the benefits you got from digital advertising platforms, display advertising platforms, you can probably just have to do, uh, you can either automate it, or do that manual efforts and just understand on the monthly basis saying that okay this is what our brand is getting this is what our competitors are getting and you can then calibrate your uh, strategy accordingly in terms of uh, how you want it to so personally i believe that advertising has taken a bit of a hit uh, not bit as in medium hit in terms of uh, how third party cooks cookies overall played that role uh, and that various players right in terms of uh, publisher in terms of the ad tech platform in terms of uh, advertiser so they used to play a key role for you to just be at the middle there and pass on the data and understand, okay, this is a set of people coming, you can show them their ad. Uh, and then you can just bring that traffic and then go about your funnel activities in terms of conversion, in terms of setting up a demo or whatever your goals are. So I think we can, the workaround would be that. Uh, also, I think important aspect is Google is definitely trying to fill up the space, uh, which uh, typically uh, the third party or other domains I have left. So they had this uh, something called as flock, federated learning of cohorts. Uh, uh, they put a pause on that and then they switched to topics, 
so this is a privacy sandbox scheme and the standards are still working focus they are not uh, let it out to the market so put it in simple terms so when you open your home browser there uh, so you will just put in a, a couple of kind of cookies there and just measure what kind of topics you are interested in say you are visiting sports related website you are visiting music or fitness related websites so out of the 300 topics that google has designed or probably defined for now uh, they will just probably create a group in terms of various visitors they may not know you they may not you in your name email all of that but they just see in terms of what kind of topics are being searched how is your overall website behavior looking like and web behavior rather not just website maybe you see different kind of websites right uh, when you go online so just probably tag this and then they probably pass this to the uh, publisher or ad tech platform so that you can leverage that data and then do it so the privacy is being met so there's a balance between uh, advertising and privacy here but still i would say there is some uh, demarcation layer there uh, which probably either parties can use and then yeah go about the uh, advertising understood thank you thank you so much shikant i think uh, my doubt is clear now now uh, as we are discussing digital analytics i believe social media is an um, important part in our digital marketing and in that social media linkedin marketing is one of the important part so i would like to ask a question to mr shonesh so my question is according to you uh, within the b2b marketing which are the key linkedin ma marketing metrics marketing professional should follow over to shonesh sure can you guys hear me yes I, we can hear you yeah so see in linkedin uh, since i come from a b2b standpoint and uh, i primarily work with b2b saas companies for us uh, you know a lot of uh, you know typically the kind of ads we end up doing is uh, you know branding ads and lead gen ads okay yeah. so from a metric point of view when i am doing a branding ad i'll check the ctrs the impressions so uh, you know what kind of industry is being shown to uh, if i am you know doing a multi industry campaign what kind of companies are looking at it so that is something one of the you know from a b2b standpoint i would really look at those kind of uh, you know metrics apart from the you know usual ones which are you know around uh, you know uh, cost per result you know uh, uh, in terms of website visits uh, how much uh, would be the you know cpc like and stuff like that so all those things are uh, you know are uh, usual but beyond that uh, uh, if i am do doing a lead gen campaign lead gen campaign i would typically look at the conversions the cost per lead number of leads uh, you know cpc and so on and so forth what's interesting is uh, beyond the regular metrics uh, what is interesting and what a lot of people don't uh, realize is that uh, especially in b2b environments wherein it's not necessary that you will get leads from uh, you know a lot of your uh, you know initiatives because it's a very uh, depending on product to product uh, you know it may be a burning need or it may be a latent need for a lot of uh, people but what linkedin does really well is uh, you know give you insights on what which which companies are viewing your ads which designations are viewing your ads so that you know your sales team can at least have even if you if they are not getting uh, the uh, you know the lead as such but they can get an idea as to which people are interacting or engaging with their ads uh, if not you know kind of uh, submitting their details so that is something which is really insightful from a b2b standpoint which which can be leveraged by the sales team Thank you, Sunish. Thank you, Sunish, for such a nice explanation. Now, go to your panel. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sunish, for uh, letting us know more about the LinkedIn analytics. Now, uh, Shubhajit, I would like to ask you a question. That is, why Google Analytics is not fulfilling the requirement of B2B marketers? Um. Uh, well. Um. I would like to uh, say that Google Analytics is an excellent tool itself, and they do get some uh, very good statistical uh, insights. Okay. However, uh, there are some basic uh, things that, uh, uh, for a B2B segment, that uh, some of the details are not very clear, and the details are not covered. Like if I take the questions like where are my leads coming from, yeah. uh, like uh, what uh, uh, people who are clicking on my website, what they are doing. It. how does that manage with my market uh, customer profile to which industry or customer do they belong to like i know that i can do this but these things are typically sometimes are not very clear like which leads i should prioritize it sir 
like how an individual session is uh, map uh, is related to the kind of data that I'm looking for. And the campaigns, whether they are uh, bringing the highest quality leads or uh, details that are not very clear. Like these, some of the things are not very clear from a, uh, uh, for a B2B uh, answers. Uh, uh, also, additionally, like for a B2B, the typical sales cycles is very long itself. And uh, that will take more than 90 days. Itself, compared to a BTC which uh, uh, has a shorter time frame. So then uh, which uh, runs something which uh, uh, for a very longer time and the data are typically not available on the analytics, that doesn't solve for all of the purposes itself. And uh, now from a B2B, it's uh, important like if I am getting how the ROIs is effectively helping for it. Like uh, these questions are, are not very clear and that's why uh, if B2C from the B2C point of view, the uh, usefulness of a Google Analytics is much more than over a B2B. Understood. Understood. Thank you so much, uh, Shubhi for your letting us know. Definitely, uh, Google Analytics is something that uh, it's firstly it's free of cost and people are using it. And small businesses who have just started, they are also uh, using. They, mostly, they are using Google Analytics. So yeah, definitely uh, this was very helpful from your side. Uh, thank you, Aparna. Thank you, Shuvajit. And now my next question is for Mr. Rishabh. My question is: uh, Do you think digital analytics and business intelligence go simultaneously? If so, how? What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, so some part of the uh, question has been answered a little back when we also discussed about data analytics, right? the difference between two. Uh, so a BI team is very important uh, and dedicated uh, business intelligence tracks should be built to handshake with the marketing team. Uh, why? Because there's a lot of data inferencing to be unearthed, right? Uh, one thing uh, as an expertise that business intelligence teams usually have is access to engineers, right? And data pipeline is very important. Considering that today the digital team is working with multi technology stack, right? Uh, we are not working with just one analytics tool. One analytics tool will help me identify and optimize my channel of acquisition. The other one is product analytics. The third one may be a reporting tool, etc. Uh, we need to ensure uh, that between the databases, the server side databases and these analytics tool, the data is exactly the same. Yeah. Because for any app analytics tool to identify you as a unique user, there are always these tokens, right? these unique tokens that are assigned uh, to the user. right? Uh, so the hygiene uh, of the data pipeline is something that only the business uh, intelligence teams manage, right? Uh, so business intelligence team uh, help to maintain a single source of truth, uh, right, for us to keep functioning. Uh, so if you look at uh, how the arrangement should be, BI teams are usually as a support function for us, uh, and at times they might be able to give us more inferences. Uh, for example, is does my industry have some seasonality trends, right? If it does, then I only work on probably uh, the marketing communications and just work along with that, right? Uh, are there external catalysts today that are affecting my business uh, or my market today, right? Uh, example being, uh, let's say if I'm a digital business uh, which is doing business with uh, Russia, right? And I'm a B2B SaaS software. For sure, Russia-Ukraine war is going to create a lot of impact, mm -hmm. right? But that is where BI team will help you understand which markets can you tap next, right? Because historically, you might have uh, sold uh, to those businesses or you might have a lot of business uh, you know pipelines maybe a lot of deals are in the evaluation stage maybe they are in the uh, pre-negotiation stage and stuff like that right so that is something that is going to be always important so BI teams are always support functions uh, and help uh, the digital teams become agile right? by giving the right form of thank you Rishabh thank you Rishabh for the explanation uh, thank you how would you open up yeah so uh, next question i would like to ask shrikant so uh, how do digital marketers need to prepare themselves uh, uh, like for all these latest trend in digital analytics as in what are these latest uh, digital analytics trend and what are the skill we need to embrace these trends for sure uh I think this is uh, one I would say is an evergreen trend is in terms of uh, how to, I think Rishabh also pointed this out, like yeah. how do you map between omni channels, right? There are so many channels online, offline. Uh, how do you 
have this omni-channel approach and then have that digital analytics tag with it, right? So that, that's, I would say, is an evergreen trend. More pertinently, more from my attribution point, for you to get that complete user journey uh, in terms of uh, how are they searching for our brands, how are they trying to get consumer content, I would say, in terms of, say, you, you float so many ads. So what is the user uh, interaction with those ads? You, they probably download a lot of your uh, assets right, at different stages. At the top of the funnel, they might be, say, brochures or something at the bottom of the funnel, middle of the funnel. There's so much content that you probably prepare and then market it. So how are users interacting with that? How are your potential audience interacting with that? So one this journey is in terms of the overall, from a prospect to a customer, the complete journey and the various touch points, the attribution. I, I, I see this as an evergreen, evergreen trend in terms of uh, when whatever, whenever I speak of additional analytics, this will always come up. So this is an ongoing and evergreen trend. Uh, second part is there's a lot of privacy focus now, uh, especially from uh, last year and a half, wherein uh, the control, the brands, typical brands, big brands, whether it's Google, Meta, and others, uh, Apple, they want to put the control to the user, right? They want to give the complete control in terms of uh, how user wants to see it, right? Putting themselves in the user's shoes. And that's when you see overall the privacy scenarios also evolving over the period of uh, past few years as such. So in terms of how the privacy evolves over the period of time and how do marketers and different functions uh, evolve or approach it, uh, I think that should be uh, other trend which we have to factor uh, on an ongoing basis. And then of course there's AI and ML in terms of various models, uh, uh, how are they shaping up the future of this analytics. Uh, this, this will of course tell both uh, the things that I've mentioned in terms of whether it's attribution or whether it is a uh, true part. So there's an ongoing uh, uh, lot of tech that goes at the back end in terms of preparing these tools, preparing this whole ecosystem uh, for you to uh, uh, various tools. For example, say we have Adobe Analytics tools. We have tools such as Hotjar and Clarity, right, which gives more in terms of behavioral analytics sites uh, in terms of how they are doing. So you get to know in tools such as Hotjar, uh, people get to know how much have you scrolled, right? Uh, how is yeah. your behavior looking like? So there's a lot of these tools, a lot of brands, a uh, lot of use cases that one can pick up and then come up with different kind of tools there. So in terms of skill set, uh, uh, I would uh, I would definitely like uh, Rishabh very well uh, convert that point, like don't have stickiness to one particular tool, right? Say, uh, I use Adobe Analytics here and some other firm they might be using Google Analytics or something else, right? Uh, Proporate Analytics here has mentioned, uh, say, uh, mixed panel, someone else might be using Pinto. So there are a lot of tools. The important focus here is to understand again what is the business use case, what is the pain point, what is the problem statement. And for you to navigate around, so once you know what is your business pain point, what are you trying to solve, right? Uh, I think she could also hit the nail on this when he was uh, answering one of the questions there. So what is that you're trying to solve? Uh, yeah. To have that uh, curiosity, I would say childlike curiosity for you to know in terms of what is the pain point and how is your potential prospect or customer behaving, right? To have the childlike curiosity there. And then you can figure out in terms of what are the tools that may be. Then you can see in terms of which are the tools which are helping, what is missing in that tool, then you can probably adopt some, something else. So have that analytical capabilities, I would say, at the basic level, and have that curiosity to know in terms of what is working, right? Omni-channel, attribution, we can throw our own terms, uh, but just to have that uh, application in terms of the point that we're trying to solve, the pain point that we're trying to solve, I think that would solve all the issues in terms of whatever skills, for example, say, of course, we'll need some basic Excel skills. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll need to understand lots of what are the different business terms that various tools are using, right? Say, Google will have a different user for journey. Some other tool will have some other some other nomenclature, not name convention there. That anyways, you can navigate around. But I would say at the basic level to just understand the pain point. And for you to have that uh, analytical skills to connect the dots in terms of what's happening there. Uh, and then you can probably feed that information into your business strategy and then use it. Correct, correct. Thank you. Thank you so much, Srikant. Uh, it was really nice to know a lot about it. Over to you, Meghmala. Okay. Thank you, Aparna. Thank you, Srikant. Now, as we all know that email marketing is one of the important part of our digital marketing, I would like to know from Mr. Shonish, which are the key email marketing metrics marketing professionals should review regularly? Hi. So, you guys can hear me, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
so uh, see email marketing can, is a great way to uh, you know test ab test your messaging and positioning uh, you know at a very less cost right as compared to any other uh, platforms right there to especially for b2b yeah. so uh, so uh, you know uh, i mean uh, uh, from that perspective i mean you can easily track uh, open rates click rates uh, ctrs which people are open your mail so just like on linkedin uh, you know uh, on linkedin you can see uh, you know who uh, which companies have seen your ad and stuff like that uh, uh, in in while the holy grail for uh, email marketing is for people to engage with your brand share your de- share their details in terms of leads and all but uh, even if they have not explicitly uh, shared their details the very fact that uh, sales guys or you know people who are uh, in the b2b space who are using email marketing they can see who has opened the emails they can uh, you know they can kind of you know use that uh, uh, use that input to further tweak the messaging to people who have opened the mail as compared to people who have not opened the mail so things like that you know apart from the regular things like you know you can always see uh, unsubscribe rate bounce rate uh, you know uh, and which device stats and uh, i mean which platform are they actually which device are they seeing your mails in uh, you know is it uh, is it more on mobile or is it is it more on the web you can accordingly tweak your uh, you know ui ux of the emails also so all these things are kind of quite relevant from that perspective thank you sonish thank you sonish for the explanation now yeah uh, yeah now i would like to ask uh, another question from shubhajit so uh, i have heard a lot about google uh, google analytics 4 so how this is going to uh, define the new age of uh, digital analytics and before that if you can also explain us what exactly is this uh, digital analytics 4 okay uh so here uh, so uh, let me give you a little bit background like sure. first it was uh, before uh, google analytics it was urchin analytics in 2005 and then uh, it was uh, classic analytics which was in 2011 and then it became okay. universal analytics in 2004 uh, 12 i uh, yeah 2012 okay. which was primarily based on heat based model now if i take as a heat based model they were primarily focusing on the server hits that were happening from the data and from the traditional page views session engagement factors and they were analyzing the data now google analytics force has been a new uh, uh, event it has been primarily based on the base is is of like an event based like any kind of interactions that are happening those are captured and those events and based on that you know, uh, the various data are being used additionally it covers both the web and the app uh, application earlier uh, there was like a person could be using the account of using the same account but from different different devices but it not used to get map so now you are getting more or less as in synchronized data so primarily in terms of it like uh, uh, it uh, that is google analytics for it provides a comprehensive view of the customer's life cycle so okay. they are using measurement models primarily um, uh, of, of independent sessions and that they are doing it plus there are various advanced machine learning models predictive insights about customers behavior and um, enhanced uh, which is helping in enhanced conversions and focusing on prospective customers so the integrations of google products such as google ads has also become an enhance the functionalities of google uh, uh, analytics for and this is helping to provide some uh, good insights and optimize ad campaigns so uh, these are the uh, primary things so uh, google and this also provide uh, like the uh, uh, drive to save uh, sales and app installs and providing like uh, uh, how to generate the leads and providing cross platform tracking okay. so every uh, thing that has been done here is getting measured as an event and it's given Uh, AI insights to that with enhanced control. So that's the reason that primarily that Google Analytics for uh, is primarily helping to have a cross-channel overview over a customer's life cycle, and it's combining to be predictive marketing functions and offering a very efficient and streamlined conversion survey. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Shubhajit, for explaining us all about the new trend that is coming. Over to you, Meghmala. I, I hope. Uh, I think Mr. Rishabh have to leave. 
the meeting room for some meeting purpose. Thank you, Lisa, for accepting our um, offer for being a guest speaker. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much, Lisa. Uh, it was really thank very you. engaging and uh, we really uh, had a great session with you and you explained us a lot about these new trends that is coming in the market. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pankhya Tapana and Meghamala and the entire forum. Uh, hope to stay in touch. Uh, great insights from Subhajit, Srikanth and Sonesh as well uh, on both the B2B sides and overall B2C. Uh, see you guys again on this forum. Sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, I will re request Ankit now to enlighten us and share his idea on digital analytics. Yep, so uh, we, we already have a really good idea from our guest speakers and really good detail available for all of us for learning purpose and for implementation and what all we should be uh, measuring for uh, marketing, for sales, for company school. So uh, for, for all of these, we have, we have plenty of tool out there, plenty of applications available at, uh, at, at the digital marketing team. And uh, to measure all these, uh, we classify usually all these tools for different purposes. So, mm -hmm. so when we see what all we have to we have to measure in terms of marketing, in terms of sales, in terms of customer success, in terms of product success. So for everything, we have different metrics available inside the market, and digital analytics is playing quite bigger role in the market. So one of the major thing what I could see uh, the difference between the digital analytics and Data analytics is we keep on uh, we keep on uh, looking into the data analytics is having a ton of data. Those data can uh, can be cleaned. Those data can be arranged. Those data can be available in different formats. But digital analytics, when we talk about most of the time, we have to keep the data refined, keep the data available, keep the data in right shape and size. And then, uh, and then make the analytics available for uh, for the end customers and and for decision makers to keep uh, keep using these analytics. And when we talk about digital analytics for all the channels, for all the platforms, we have all these digital analytics available for all all purpose for for the business and the marketing team. So wherever the consumers are, end consumers are interacting with the data. We have we we should we should uh, with the permission of uh, the consumer we should be measuring the uh, we should be measuring the analytics and then finding out uh, the decision and then making the decisions from these data. So this is this is my take on on digital analytics and data analytics I have and uh, a lot of detail. I'm I'm really thankful to all speakers to explain all minute details in and out of of all of the analytics. Thank you so much. So, Nes, thank you so much. So, Vijit, Rishav, and Srikant, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. Uh, so, uh, I would like to thank you, our esteemed panel members, for this insightful discussion. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Niche, Niche Marketers, also. Miss Marketers is a community of credible and expert marketers in India. You all can have a look at their website. I am putting their link on the chat box. Okay, so uh, thank you so much panel members for the super engaging session. I'm sure everyone must have learned a lot and taken a lot of information from you all guys. Thank you so much. And now I would like to add here that we organize these kind of webinar on weekly basis. It's like every Wednesday 5 p.m. for uh, next two to three months we have planned it already. So uh, for next week we have planned on a very crucial topic that is next uh, evolution of your marketing automation, customer data platform that is CDP. So I have given the link for registration and it is open so uh, I have given it in the chat box. You can just go there and register now itself and also uh, we have also made the WhatsApp group where we can uh, we do give update about the webinar topic. If you are interested you can join the group as well. So that also link I have provided. And other than this we will also put this webinar on our YouTube channel that is uh, uh, Aritic. 
do like, share and subscribe to our uh, channel for the recorded version of the webinar. And definitely it was very engaging. So if you want to know more about data analytics and uh, digital analytics and everything, whatever uh, our uh, speaker shared with us, you can definitely go to our channel and watch it out over there. So thank you so much everyone for joining for the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.